In the last section, we focused on um, Lewis structures, and here we're going to extrapolate a little bit to formal charges and resonance. We talked quite a bit about formal charges in the previous section. So in this section, we'll focus just on resonance, even though um, how to calculate formal charge is shown in this section of the book. Note that they're using the mathematical formula for formal charge as opposed to the counting method that's shown in the previous video. These are exactly the same thing, so you can use either one, um, but to me, it's easier to use just count the counting method to determine whether something has a positive or negative or neutral formal charge, as opposed to actually having to use a math equation. So what we want to talk about here is resonance, and resonance is a complex subject that we're going to touch on here. And there's a few things you need to know about resonance uh, for general chemistry. But resonance is one of those things that the more you study chemistry, the, uh, the more you learn about it and you find different forms. And it actually comes up uh, quite often in organic chemistry. Uh, so I do want to touch on it here. And there is some things you're responsible for. So resonance are two or more Lewis structures that have the same arrangement of atoms, but different arrangements of electrons. So the electrons are in different places. And in just a minute, we'll show you some examples of this. And a resonance hybrid is the average of the resonance forms shown by the individual Lewis structures. And this is an interesting thing that doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's actually quite important. So when we draw different resonance forms on a piece of paper, we draw what, is, what it's possible to draw. But what actually exists is somewhere in the middle. So let's take an example of um, a rhinoceros. Now, this is a little bit of a stretch of the imagination, but you could say that a rhinoceros is a combination of a dragon and a unicorn. So if you were describing a rhinoceros to somebody who'd never seen one, you could say it's like a mix between a dragon and a unicorn. Well, dragons and unicorns don't exist, and rhinoceroses do. However, dragons and unicorns can be used to describe the rhinoceros itself. This is what resonance forms are. Several resonance forms can be used to, to describe a Lewis structure, even though they themselves don't actually discreetly exist. Just like dragons and unicorns don't discreetly exist, rhinoceroses do. And you can still use them in the description. So let's take an example. Let's look at carbonate. CO3 2 minus. So here, if you look, we have the double bond on the left and the two single bonds up top and on the right. And this oxygen is minus and this oxygen is minus. In this case, we have the double bond on the right. So it switched from the left to the right. We essentially took these two electrons and moved them in here. Since we couldn't have five bonded carbon, we took these two electrons and moved them back out here. We get this resonance form. Now, it still has one double bond and two single bonds. In this case, the same thing. Now, we have this resonance form. If we take this electrons and drop them in here, it makes it into a double bond. And then take these two electrons and put them out here, it makes it back into a single bond. And you end up with this one. Now, these three resonance forms are kind of like the dragon and the unicorn. They don't exist. What exists is a hybrid of these three and actually, believe it or not, other resonance forms. But these are energy equivalent resonance forms, which mean they all have the same energy or the same stability, because the only difference is where the double bond is. But what's important to note about resonance is that if you were to measure the length of these bonds, a double bond is shorter than a single bond. And if you were to look at these resonance forms, what you would say is, well, you'll see one short bond and two longer bonds because a double bond is shorter than a single bond. But in actuality, what you would see is three bonds that are all the same length that are approximately one third of a bond, uh, one and one third bonds, because you have two singles and one double. The other thing is you would expect to see two negatively charged oxygens and one neutral oxygen. In actuality, what you would see is three oxygens with about a two thirds minus charge because that negative charge is spread all over these oxygens. Since it's impossible to draw that, what the best we can do is to draw the three 
what are called energetically equivalent resonance forms. And they're energetically equivalent because they both have um, one double bond and two single bonds. It's just where that double bond is. And we can just move the electrons around. Stepping back for one second, these are resonance forms because it's still carbon in the middle bonded to three oxygens. The only difference is the arrangement of electrons. In this case, you have two lone pairs on oxygen and a double bond. In this case, what, you essentially, what we essentially did was we took these two electrons, moved them here, and these two electrons and moved them here. So you have the exact same formula, just a different, or the exact same arrangement of atoms, just a different arrangement of electrons, which makes them resonance forms. And again, they're energetically equivalent because the, um, the double bond has just moved. There's no one that's more stable or one that's less stable. They're all equally stable. Finally, one last time, in actuality, you don't have a double bond and two single bonds. You have three exactly the same length, one and a third bonds, and you essentially have each oxygen being two thirds minus. Let's look at nitrate, which is another example. Here we have a positive nitrogen and two negative oxygens. Here we have the double bond here, here we have it here, and here we have it here. Now the lone pairs are not shown on this um, example, but essentially what's happening is to move it over here, a lone pair of oxygen comes here. You can't have five bonded nitrogen, so the lone pair jumps up here. These are again energetically equivalent because the only difference is double bond here, double bond here, or double bond here. The oxygens are basically this time, um, again, uh, two thirds minus because two of them are negative and one of them is neutral. And also the bond lengths are the same. So it's not a double bond and two single bonds or a short bond and two longer bonds. It's in actuality, a one and a third bond all the way around. So these two are very similar, CO3 two minus and NO3 minus, but both of them have energetically equivalent resonance forms. I should note that both of these also have um, resonance forms that are not energetically equivalent. So let's look at resonance forms that are not energetically equivalent. And here's where we get into things um, where this is kind of a continuum. And to try to discuss everything on the continuum uh, would be too confusing and too advanced for this course. It's something that you subtly learn over time of seeing lots and lots of different resonance forms. But let's look at these two. Here we have formaldehyde and all the formal charges are zero. I'm not drawing any more Lewis structures because we spent uh, the previous video being an hour long. If I keep drawing Lewis structures in all of these videos, um, they'll all end up being an hour long and then uh, it'll be just too much time to watch. So instead of that, if you'd like to go back to drawing Lewis structures, please see the previous video. So here we have formaldehyde, which is a carbon bonded to two hydrogens and an oxygen. And we could take these two electrons and put them over here. So I just simply move these two electrons over here. Now oxygen has three lone pairs instead of two, and this is a single bond instead of a double bond. Now we have a plus and a minus charge on the oxygen. Yeah, I can't change that. So now we have a minus charge and a plus charge. So the minus charge is on oxygen and the plus charge is on carbon. The this resonance form is lower in energy and is more stable. This resonance form is higher in energy and it should say less stable. The reason that it's less stable is because it has formal charges. Remember that one of the things that we do when we draw the best Lewis structure it, or draw the most stable Lewis structure is we minimize the formal charges. So in the previous case, this would account for about a third, this about a third, and this about a third of what actually occurs. Here, this might account for 80% and this 20%, I'm making that up, but this would be a much greater con contribution to the resonance because it's more stable. So it's kind of like a weighted average, if you will. So these are inequivalent resonance structures. They're still resonance structures because they only differ by the arrangement of atoms. But this structure is um, higher in energy. And again, this should say less stable. And I'll change it for the notes that you guys get. So energy inequivalent resonance forms that only differ in the arrangement of atoms. Now what I'd like to do is draw the energy 
energetically equivalent resonance forms of phosphate and draw one that is less stable, um, a resonance form. So here I want to draw phosphate. So I'm going to start with the first phosphate. So P double bond O, two lone pairs, bond O, bond O, bond O, and these each have three lone pairs. So this is a Lewis structure of phosphate, PO4, three minus. These three oxygens are all minus, and then the total um, of three minus, which matches the charge on the ion. I should also note that phosphorus has an expanded octet, but it's in period three, so it's allowed to have an expanded octet, and that minimizes its formal charge. Now the arrow for resonance is this one. The arrows that I'm about to draw are not required, but I want you to see what's going on. Let's, let's say that these two electrons go here. Now, we don't want to put a formal charge on phosphorus, so we put these two electrons up here. And what we end up with is this oxygen is now single bonded and negatively charged. This oxygen is now double bonded and neutral. These two oxygens are basically the same, are the same. and they're both minus charged. Let's do another one. Again, a resonance arrow is a double-headed arrow. These two electrons go here. Oops, let me do it from here. These two electrons go here, and those two electrons go back over there. What we end up with, I don't mean to pull that off the screen, is a phosphorus double bonded to the oxygen on the bottom, which now has one less lone pair, it's now neutral, bonded to this oxygen, which now has an extra electro, uh, an extra lone pair and is now minus, and the other two oxygens, nothing happened to them. They just went around for the ride, along for the ride. So they both have three lone pairs and are minus charged. Now I can do this one more time. These two electrons go here, these two electrons go there, and we end up with another resonance form, which is phosphorus in the middle, the double bond is now here, and that one's neutral. And we have three single bonded oxygens, each with a minus charge. These four resonance forms are energetically equivalent. So they have both have, they all have the same charges, the same uh, number of double bonds and number of single bonds, and this molecule exhibits resonance. One question you might be asked is, does um, phosphate exhibit resonance? And the answer would be yes, and these are the four equivalent resonance forms. Note that there are is one double bond and three single bonds in all of the resonance forms drawn, but it doesn't actually exist this way. In actuality, this is basically four one and a quarter bonds. So basically you have three singles and one double, so four total bonds, one of them is a double, so there's, it's like having four one and a quarter bonds. Same thing with the charges. Three of the oxygens are negative and one is neutral. However, in actuality, they're about three quarters minus a piece. That's how you can think about it. If you were to look at the bonds lengths, there would not be one short bond and three long bonds. They would all be the same length. So this is a form of resonance. In fact, this is the form of resonance um, that you're going to find on the exam. Multiple bonds that can be in more than one place. Now, we want to draw one resonance form that is less stable. So I'm going to go back to the original phosphate, which was the double bond was on the top. doesn't really matter, but I'm going to draw the one with the double bond on the top. In this case, I'm going to just move these two, that should be two, about our, two uh, a lone pair, two electrons. I'm going to move these two electrons up here. And now phosphorus is in the middle, and all of the oxygens have three lone pairs. So this is a different resonance form than any of the other ones above. In this case, 
this oxygen is minus. These oxygens stayed along for the ride, so they're all minus to begin with. So an oxygen with three lone pairs and a single bond is negatively charged. Phosphorus wants to have five electrons around it because it's in 5A and it has one, two, three, four. It's missing an electron, so it's plus. This is less stable or higher in energy than this. Why? It has more formal charges. This one has three minus charges, and this, this one has three minus charges, and this one has four minus charges and a plus charge. This would be contributing less. So if these resonance forms make up 95% of the contribution to phosphate, this may make up 5%. And I'm totally making up those numbers, but it would be a weighted average if you were trying to look at bond length or bond energy or whatever. So that's basically um, how this works for resonance. Now, one thing that I've seen people confuse is any molecule with a double bond having an energetically equivalent resonance form. And if you look at something like carbon dioxide here, there is no energetically equivalent resonance form of carbon dioxide because it has two double bonds. So if you move this out here, you're going to put formal charges, negative and positive, on carbon and oxygen. That is not energetically equivalent. There's no way to move these double bonds. So if the double bond can be in multiple locations, top, right, bottom, left, like these four resonance forms, then they're energetically equivalent. Just because something has double bonds doesn't necessarily mean that it has energetically equivalent resonance forms. So please be aware of that as you're looking at these problems.